Thank you so much for joining us, Sheila. And can you tell us about Energia and the impact of its work to mainstream gender into energy? I think it's very important to say that gender and energy and women's space has really come a long way. And when Energy first started in 1996, which was at the backdrop of the uh, Beijing Platform for Action, gender being an issue in was was not considered a legitimate issue in the uh, energy sector. So we've come a long way from there to now. The Sustainable Energy for All um, initiative was launched by the uh, UN Secretary General in in uh, 2012. And, and based on that, the uh, Sustainable Energy for All Decade uh, was established until 2024. And the first two years of that was focused on energy, women, children and health. Even when we're looking at the Sustainable Development Goal, the link between uh, the uh, SDG on women's economic empowerment and gender equality and Goal 7 on Sustainable mm-hmm. Energy for All were very clear. So we've come a long way on that. And I think that has been one of the major impacts. But that journey has been long. And in that, things have changed. Where we started with a gender mainstreaming approach, and that is um, where you look at energy projects and you try to see how you can work with gender in it, we have now moved to a more targeted uh, uh, approach. Part of this change that has taken place, and this then links very closely to what Power for All is trying to do, is that we have seen that we're moving from mainstream energy actors Uh, occupying the space on a large grid rural electrification, running very large programs, and then trying to uh, mainstream gender into that, to actually say, no, if we're really going to be able to tackle, to scale up on energy access, you know, we have to look at off-grid programs, decentralized energy. So I have a much more targeted approach to the last mile and the people who do not have those. And and women make a very important market segment uh, in that. And are you able to give us a specific example of uh, one of the targeted programs where Energy has been seeing success? The example that I'd like to give is the one from Senegal. In Senegal, we're working in two areas, Tambacunda and Kedukou, which is in the eastern part of, uh, of Senegal. And these are one of the poorest areas. And so here, uh, selling off-grid solar products is really critical to improving the livelihoods of communities in these areas. And we are using uh, women entrepreneurs to do this. Uh, we work with Total, sole importer of Delight products uh, in Senegal. But when we worked with Total, they didn't understand who are these women entrepreneurs. It's too much of a risk. So what we did is that we then came in with uh, Jiva, our partner, uh, who's been working in this space for a long time, came in with a loan guarantee uh, fund. Uh, so the way it works is that... Um, uh, we have a loan guarantee with Total. Rather than having it at the bank, we went directly to the supplier. So I think that's one, it's innovative. In Senegal, we're working with about 250 women's groups, and these groups are consist of maybe between uh, 20 to 50 women per group. So in the end, it, it comes to a total of about 6,000 women uh, entrepreneurs that we're working with. And of course, Total cannot work with those 6,000. So we identified uh, seven uh, leading entities, as we call them. They buy in bulk from Total. Uh, so the uh, for instance, the first assign- consignment we had was 36,000 units, different units ranging, ranging from just the solar lanterns to the systems where you can uh, charge your uh, phone uh, to the solar home systems where you can, uh, you know, run your radios, etc., etc. And also now we want to add the up to 120 watts where you can actually have uh, productive uses. You know, you can run your fridges, etc. You can actually run a business. But uh, so total then we're working with the seven entities. Entities, they're supplying directly to these women entities. We have the loan guarantee fund uh, because the women pay 25% upfront, 75% they have to pay within 60 days. Our loan guarantee fund comes in case there's any default, uh, which we haven't had in case there's any default. Uh, Total then has some assurance that they can get some money, that the risk is, is being uh, mitigated. Uh, what we do find is that the women are making uh, profits of about uh, two dollars, also to uh, to to about uh, to the bigger systems, almost about uh, five dollars profits when they're selling their the systems. We also worked with Total, as you know, it was a win-win situation. They were moving the products to the to the filling stations. They were not able to move it beyond uh, that, really, to uh, to their customers. So we came in and we said, we have these women entrepreneurs that are running businesses themselves. They have got the links, and we can add this to their uh, products. So they started selling them. But at the same time, because Total is actually moving the systems, it, it transports things, we were able to cut down on the distribution costs and transportation costs. So it can be done, it's working, it works for Total because Total is able to deliver on its corporate social responsibility uh, objectives 
of reaching out to the last mile. It's able to move products that it wasn't uh, uh, working. It's working for the women because the women are then uh, running a credible business. This is not uh, charity work. They're running a business. Yeah, so it's, it's, we find that it's a, it's a win-win situation and it's one that we're quite proud of.